Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is material the frac node. So the frac node or fractional is basically going to return back just the fractional or decimal part of an input. That's it. It's pretty simple. So let's cover how it works. So your frac node has one input and one output. It's going to go ahead and take in a scalar like a parameter 1 or it could take in an xy, a vector 2 or a vector 3. It's simply going to apply the frac to each portion of that, each float. So Unlike the ceiling and the floor node, which is going to basically round up and down and give you the result, frac is basically going to completely remove the integer or the whole portion of our value and give us just back the remainder, the, the divisor, the, the decimal portion. So for example here, I have a 2 feeding into our frac node and going into our miss of color. What you're going to see is basically 0 because you have no fractional portion. If I was to increase this up to say 2.9, 2.9, there we go, we're going to get back 0.9 or almost 1, which means we're going to get an almost white color. That's it. It's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and let's try some things out. Let's plug in a time node to our frac, and you're going to see it going from black to almost white. Remember, our time node is basically, it's going to count up from 0 to infin infinity based on the current time that we're running. So it's going to be 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and it's going to continue going. Our frac node is going to remove the whole portion and just output the smaller portion, the decimal part. And of course, that's going to be between 0 and 1, which is going to give us black and white. Now we could do something else with it. Let's say, for example, we feed this frac value, which is a 0 to 1, into a lerp, which of course, the lerp wants a 0 to 1 in order to work properly. So by doing this, what we're doing is we're basically lurping between green and red based on the time, just the fractional portion of the time. Now, of course, you may be thinking to yourself, if we went ahead and t plugged in time to our alpha, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to continue up. It's going to be above 1, and we're going to have a really weird issue. If we take our period on the time and set this to 1, well, we could basically duplicate our frac node. We're going to go from 0 to 1 on our time node, and it's going to continue repeating. But of course, this is using the time node, using a restrictor on the time node, whereas the frac itself basically does the same thing. It's just going to give us back the fractional result, and we're going to get 0 to 1. So that's it. Frac is useful if maybe you are doing some multiplication and you have some really large results, but you want to try to kind of fake normalize it without using the normalize node and get you just the smaller 0 to 1 result, you can use the frac node. If there are any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.